For those of you who'd like access to this content, follow the link in the description box, visit our Patreon page, and subscribe to the Black Kluge tier. For a mere $5 a month, you get access to the alternate Sunday episodes you've been missing, only available on Patreon, as well as the weekly Tuesday episodes. But wait, there's more. If you subscribe to the Black Kluge tier, you'll also get two weeks advance notice to our Thursday sessions. And if you needed any more incentive, when we have bonus episodes, Patreon is the place where you're going to find them. Also, don't forget to check out TeePublic for our great swag. The link is also in the aforementioned description. And the producer of Howard's Porky's Project telling Howard 100 News the script for the remake is ready to go. Dan Gross saying it's full speed ahead to make Howard Stern's Porky's this fall. That's true. I watch that and I go, who the fuck would want to be... Bro I mean, Ryan Seacrest makes a lot of money. What, what does he want to be on New Year's Eve doing that dumb fucking show? But he loves that shit. He loves to work. Sure does. I don't. I'm looking to make the most amount of money I can with the least amount with of With the... Maybe one job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, you know, listen. Thank God she's growing up nice. She's not getting any of that awkward stage like that lispy kid... Yeah, uh, she doesn't look awkward. You're right. I said to her, Millie, we can't tolerate you having some sort of awkward stage. You got to do a Brooke Shields and just be hot from the time you're a little girl to the time you're a woman. <laughs> yeah, okay, Ralph's so I wake you. up in the morning. I see Ralph's bedroom is empty. Artie, I, I realize Ar Artie locks his door at night. I well, didn't see you locked. Did you have a thing? Uh, because uh, what I did was I tried to open the door to see if you were in there because I figured both of you guys were gone and then the door was locked. Uh, I don't remember doing it. Maybe I did it out of habit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you lock yourself in at home? No, not in. in the bedroom, bedroom. But I might have. I was a little drunk myself. I might have locked the. I guess like I locked the, the front door. Well, something. good thing you did, because I would have been in your room. <laughs> right. Are you smart? Who needs you? In there? <laughs> right. Hey, always lock your door at Howard's house. Meanwhile. Yes, right. You have raised children in the age of the cell phone. Yes, I have. And uh, you find that. Your kids like to text. They do. But do you ever text and not get an answer back? Yeah, sure. And how does All that make time. you feel? Well, I know they're glued to that thing 24-7. Yeah. Even Beth does that to me. Uh-huh. Like, I write her and she doesn't, <laughs> she doesn't answer. Like, uh, the one who was in Spook, the first Spider-Man where you play the villain. Your boyfriend. Oh, my God. What a... You saw him in a play. Oh, Willem Dafoe. And I think he was naked in the play. Willem Dafoe. Didn't you see him in a play naked? No. Someone told me he was in a play once naked, and uh, well, he's I got a huge that. cock. I think she's some kind of an editor. Hey, Gail's Oprah's Ralph. <laughs> oh, that's a good way to put it, all right? But, but uh, she actually completes things. <laughs> yeah, she does. She does? <laughs> no, I, my theory is, and, you know, hey, it's only a theory. I ain't saying anybody's a lesbo. I don't know. I feel those two are in love with each other and that they do each other and that they have sex with each other. Uh, blown out, lesbian well, sex. Uh, so she really is his Ralph. They travel together. You agree, right? I, I totally agree. And I, I, think, felt it. I think if that is true, Oprah should come out of the closet. Welcome, ladies and gents, to QF, a podcast about Howard Stern. I'm your host, Phil Moore, a.k.a. Jim Fix. And with me today is Wayne. How are you today, brother? Good. Good in the snowstorm day today. Here in, um, in the Boston area, uh, Boston didn't get hit, but we got hit out here. So mm -hmm. it, was, it was a project. Yeah, it, not a green, not a green Christmas, but definitely a green. I don't know what's coming up next. What's what's next in January? He's, Nothing. No, Martin Luther King Day next. <laughs> Valentine's Day is still a while away. Yeah. Nothing, nothing holiday related. That's for certain. Well, Guys, Valentine's, Valentine's oh. candy was on the shelf in CVS the day oh, after Christmas. You've got to be kidding me. You, no nope. way. Not less than like I went in to get batteries, like for watch batteries, and um, in Valentine's Day candy was already there, and the um, Cadbury Easter eggs are already out. That's brutal. I mean, the I day know after Christmas. Uh, that's that's awful. Like they couldn't wait till New Year's at least. Uh -huh. That that's nope. that's that that's just cynical. Well, anyway, guys, um, we I d d decided to uh, surprise Wayne with this one, and it's um, it's a wrap up show clip from June fifth, two thousand eight, and it's just uh, a good jump off clip of b basic different topics um, 
with regard to guests they've had on that they fucked with or that thought they were being fucked with. And Artie's on the wrap up show. Gary's on the wrap up show. And it's um, like I said, it's a good mish 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 mash of uh, topics and different things. And they're going to start talking about the rap the uh, Howard TV staff for a little bit. And um, we're going to just take it and see how it goes. So here we go. Uh, what Carrie ends up doing at dinner and the flack you took for that. Hey, did you notice, by the way, I think it's really funny. Do you notice that there's nobody in here today? Like yesterday, the, the, the wrap up show was packed because there was so much animosity. Yeah. Everyone was waiting to throw each other under the bus and there's like literally nobody here today except Artie Lang just walked in and fucked the whole thing up. But we always love an Artie Lang stop. I, I was saying that it, there was nobody here today because yesterday they all came in to fight with each other. Oh. I heard, yeah, it was very, uh, sorry. No, I have uh, I have Robin's lunch, you know, Robin auction off a lunch with me. And I have that today, and I have to leave at noon, so I can't figure I had some time to kill. I'd come in and say hi. Now, what he said, when Artie said, um, they, uh, Robin auctioned off a lunch, this isn't 15 Foundation related. This is before that, but this is definitely okay. Robin, one of Robin's charities at the time related. Well, at least if you go out to lunch with Artie, you're going to get uh, a good, decent, uh, probably Italian meal or something. You're not going to be getting green drink or, um, or you know, some leaves or something. You know. Yeah, maybe a couple of good stories as well. Yeah, I'd, I'd go out to lunch with Addy in a second. Who wouldn't? You know. Oh, well, totally. Yeah. I got to leave in like uh, 15 minutes. Schedules a bear, but I. Um, <laughs> how excited are you for this lunch? Listen, not half as excited as the guys having it with me. I don't even know who they are. I, I don't know who. I mean, somebody paid 10 G's. I'm flattered. But uh, does that mean do I pick up the tab? Generally not, but apparently you are. I guess I do. Right? I guess you are. If they paid 10 grand. Oh, no, they don't pick up the tab. It's either generally the charity picks up the tab, but yeah, so case, Robin should have thrown me a C note or something. No. Which if, if they pay ten grand, you think the law? I would think the law for to pick up the, the lunch, right? No, that's embarrassing. I'm not gonna. If they paid that much, I'm not gonna make them pay for the lunch. Right. No, no. That's brutal. Like, like if you, yeah. if you, but but maybe you should figure this out. Maybe Robin should figure this out with Artie before she does shit like this. Yeah, definitely. She should, at least she should have set it up. Like you said, the charity should have. Sprung for the launch at least after 10, 10 grand. Uh, how many guys like would they all chip in for? I, I think this was were? this was one person. Oh wow! Yeah, one person okay, should so, paid 10, yeah. 10 grand to. I don't know that I'd pay ten grand to to have lunch with Artie or whatever. Mm -hmm. I I don't think I'd pay anything to, to have lunch with Artie. To be honest with you, I might buy yeah. his lunch. Yeah. 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 Just for the goof, uh, but remember, like uh, when Crazy Alice went into went to the, he took her to the Yankees game. Yeah. Yeah, like like that would be. I think watching the Yankees with Artie would be uh, a total trip. Well, he um, and he bought her a whole bunch of Yankees crap or whatever too when they went to the game. Yep. He, uh, he said he bought her a shirt, like and a he jacket, one of those real nice shirts like he wore, you know. Um, but yeah, and a jacket. Yep. I can only imagine what those things cost. I was looking into um, buying a Montreal Canadiens jersey, like an on a real jersey. There, I think. A, the, but the problem is. The the this is what bothers me. The team jerseys are made by Adidas, and the the fan edition ones is made by some fly by night company, and they still charge like three hundred bucks for the quote wow. unquote licensed product. I'm like, go fuck yourself. You could order a knockoff from China that looks and feels exactly the same for under fifty bucks. If you go online, there's like things that have come up on Facebook. Or I bought a. Um Wow, I got a closeout, like a nice Boston College polo shirt um, that just came. And I think it was like 15 bucks. And then you just pay for the shipping. And it tops, it was like maybe $23 or something with the shipping. Yeah. And, um, it's nice quality polo shirt. It was just a closeout. And then I got a couple of um, hats from there. But that were actually cheaper than going down to the college to pick them up. Well, I mean, the people people are not in this in this day and age. It's not to say that people shouldn't support whatever business you know. If it's a sporting team, then you you support your your franchise and stuff. But you don't. You're, it's not necessary to have that kind of stuff for you to fuck yeah. your 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 fan base for. Uh, I, it's over the top. It's over the and like it's like um, I think I mentioned one time on the show. 
you know, Gibson Les Pauls. They're being manufactured in, by in, in, illegally in China as knockoffs. They, we call them they, – people call them chipsons. <laughs> <laughs> and there's guys doing reviews on YouTube telling you, look, you change the pickups and you change some of the strings, there you won't know the difference between the real thing, which costs, you know, three grand, two grand, sometimes fifteen hundred, and this thing that costs three and four hundred. Well, I know they they make some nice ukuleles in Taiwan. I've seen there's a store that that is near the um the t- the main town where my girlfriend lives, and um, and I saw it like really nice quality wood. You know, and it's cheaper than you can get them over here. But um, I guess you just look around. But yeah, they cha- you change the pickups, and you got a a decent as long as the wood is like, you know, good solid wood that they're making them out of. Right, not pasteboard or something like yeah. that. Yeah, or that well, stuff Ikea. that they that. Oh yeah, well yeah, or that uh, that that glue. You know, that stuff that they manufacture to make desks out of now. You know, yeah. instead of real solid pieces of like. Obviously, they're not cutting down any mahogany trees for, uh, you know, knockoff guitars. But um, anyway, I I have no problems uh, doing that because especially when they get a little beyond what normal people can afford, it's retarded. It's just ridiculous. Well, it's the same as um, on eBay. They have the stuff that's um, and it's licensed too. But you yeah. can, if you get them at the show, and, but um, you can get them on eBay, and they're licensed to these. I don't know these companies, but um, and they're better quality than you'd get at the concert for shirts. Oh, tour shirts and, and yeah. things like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the, especially there's some people that specialize in older tour shirts, not sh- not yeah. things that they've made up that are bogus, but they look legit. Because you know, there's a huge industry in. Excuse me. <clears throat> Pardon me. Excuse me. Five, four, three, two, one. Not the bogus concert uh, poster like industry, which there's loads of them around. They use like yeah. a basic template, and they they show you that you know they're made for you know those kind of plaque mount type posters that people can buy. Uh, real legit T-shirt co- from concerts past, but obviously, if you went and got a Live Aid shirt, for example, it would cost you. A, a real Live Aid shirt, which, by the way, uh, feels like it's cheesecloth. You know, it really is made poorly, and you'd have to pay hundreds of dollars for a legit, real T-shirt. I have one I, somewhere. I got a real Live Aid t- tour shirt, and the quality is god awful. Yeah, no, there's there were shirts, tons of shirts, and actually, like all my old shirts, my sister made them into a quilt for me. Mm-hmm. And um, all my old concerts. Then, then a guy contacted me. He's like, "Oh, do you have old concert shirts?" I'm like, "Well, not anymore. They're all in a quilt now." And then yeah. this guy was offering to pay big bucks for old concert shirts. You know, I then, then who, I used who'd to ever think. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, there's a, there's a market for them. Although I'll tell you, one mm-hmm. time I went into um, there's a place there's a chain in Canada called Value Village, and basically it's just a used like clothing store mm-hmm. but it's used everything board games books cds games you know everything you want shoes even although god knows you don't touch them um you don't want to buy people's fungus um the they were selling the, the shit loads of tour shirts you, if you look through there's always like a bunch of tour shirts that people want to get rid of and they do certainly but what i found the, found the last time it was there was a, a like there must have been a hundred new kids on the block cruise tour shirts shirts <laughs> <laughs> so people that actually paid money to see however many members of New Kids on the Block on a tour on a cruise, performing. Wow. Yeah, wonder when that was. Like that, they, I mean, they're local around here, and that's like I have stories to tell you about them or whatever. But uh, it was just uh, I, I despise them, and I know that um, some of our like actually some of the people we do the show with um, like them, but um, I never bought into that. And they used to be out at the clubs when they were underage drinking, and Maurice Starr was with them and all the stuff. And uh, they, they were all over town. Wasn't Maurice Starr, um, wasn't, <laughs> wasn't he the subject of some controversy? <laughs> yeah. Well, it, yeah, I, f- I forget what it was all about. But then he tried to launch another, like another little kid or something after, after New Kids in the Block was over, but it kind of went nowhere. And um, they were, he was claiming that, that this kid was going to be as big as the Beatles or whatever, but um, that kind of went nowhere. But he, I used to see him around. I used to see all those new kids. I saw the one that looked like the Joker. Um, one of them pulled up in front of Tower Records and just like blocked Mass Ave and was like, you know, in a Jeep, like waving to girls and everybody was going gaga and yelling, you suck. I mean, that's how I was back then. You know, I was probably in my early 20s. I'm like, you suck. Fuck off, you know. And uh, it's, it really got oh, me going. 
this the, let me see if I got the uh, the the citation here. Okay, this is from a book called God's Gangsters in Honor, a Rock and Roll Odyssey. It says he was fired by New Edition because I know I remember he did, managed yeah. them before New Kids on the Block. Uh, or at the, it, yeah, he, it says he was fired by New Edition for embezzling funds. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, it's not as bad as I thought it was. Maybe there's more in yeah. there somewhere, but uh, that's you know that's pretty standard rock and roll 101. Uh, fuck your band uh, out of yeah. out of money, you know. Fuck uh, fuck band members even. Anyway, oh, I don't think you should, but I'm saying they'll probably make an offer. See, see this is what Robin's new to the charity world. Generally, what would happen is somebody from the charity would accompany you, and they would be there to be like a buffer, and they would pick up the bill. So, so that's Gary saying. This is why I know Robin's new to the charity world. In 2008, she's new to the charity world. How when did the when she's well, which ones did she jump on the bandwagon first? Well, the the uh, ages. Well, first, okay, the the little sisters, big sisters program was yeah. in the 90s, and that's I would you call that a charity? I think that was, but that was she never really talked about that on the year. Well, I guess she did. She yeah, did she here and there, but her, yeah. she mentioned yeah. her, her little sister that she ditched. But I think that, uh, that kind of comes out of your own pocket. I don't think that um, they give you money yeah, for that. No, you, they don't. Uh, I was trying to think of another one. Um, she, apparently, there was a there was one she did where she <laughs> Gary said on the wrap up show she got in trouble because it was about abused like kids like something and i guess what happened was they found out the show did episodes of it's just wrong with sisters and brothers or something oh. like that <laughs> and, <laughs> and wow. she got bounced and robin and robin had to like talk them off a cliff uh so that would have been early 2000s so i don't know what Bowie's talking about unless he thinks unless he's trying to say she's going she's she's new into going as hardcore as she is right now yeah yeah i'm not sure why why he would say that unless but then again, maybe, you know, Bowie's not exactly the most reliable narrator um, all the time. The only thing I can think of is Bowie might know because he did, um, he was involved with the, the charity life, for his life brother's, beat. Yeah, his yeah. brother's thing. Yeah. Oh, I'd say Bowie did a lot more for charity than just about everybody on oh, that yeah. show. Yeah, when he and could. he kept it quiet. Yes. Yeah. And which is the way it should be with charity, yeah, right. I, I believe, most of yeah. the time. Uh, I mean, if the charity publicizes you, that's not a problem. But if you go out waving your flag, I don't know. I I, I see the benefits of that, and other times, I don't know. I've kind I think of tacky. The first time, the first time I knew he had a charity, you know, for his brother's cause was um, the the muffins. Remember, there was wasn't there like cupcakes? Yeah, that that ba that bakery cards. Yeah, it, but yeah. I don't know. What, yeah, because I actually me and my girlfriend went there, and I got like the the cupcakes for the different people on the show. And they actually were really good. And I, then I brought a whole bunch back from my, um, from my crew. The second time I went, then they, right. actually, that's a funny story. Cause I went to go buy the um, cupcakes and that was when the, um, they had the, that van that had a bomb in it, like down in, um, you know, in Manhattan. And I walked right by the van when I went to go get the cupcakes for the, my workers. Uh, but yeah, I brought back. They had like the Howard Stern cupcake, the Adi Lang cupcake, you know, Baba Booey cupcake, and and uh, well, I remember we went. We, I went there twice to get those cupcakes. Well, I mean, it's it wasn't that. Um, <laughs> they did a story about that guy called uh, I can't remember the name. Of the it wasn't the same bakery, but he he was publicized. Like they should be, they played the audio on the uh, the uh, on the show. A guy was making what he called drunken Negro cookies. Oh wow. Uh, to celebrate the 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 you know the election of Obama, and he goes, "Oh, I, I'm not racist. I just thought they were funny." Well, why they have to be drunken? First of all, yeah. and then if you see them, they're the most racist looking cookies you've ever seen. They look like um, I don't know, like uh, Al Jolson. Well, that's like there's a store in an out and out store that's like a hip hop store in Taiwan. You could look it up online. It's called it's called Ends, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and it's a real store and and. Over there, it does. You know, they, it doesn't have the same. Like my girlfriend didn't even know the word until I heard it because she, the word that they say for that kind of sounds like it, and she's like, "Oh, we say that all the time." And I'm like, "Yeah, oh, in America, you you just don't say that." You know. Well, certainly not. Well, there's, uh, yeah. I, you know, when, you know how many uh, through going throughout Asia, you know how many Nazi themed bars I've seen. Oh yeah. And, and like a lot of them, have, a lot of them have been taken. That like they've since changed uh, over so over the years because even to those places they got publicized and the bad press was was too bad. 
Yeah, somebody brought me back some flyers from somewhere that it was like a Nazi theme bar, and they, yeah. they showed uh, showed it to me. The other thing I thought was strange. I remember when I first started going to Montreal, and you could go into like these stores on St. Catherine Street and buy like like out and out swastika rings and all kinds of just Nazi stuff. It's like, and we were kind of shocked by. It. I was like, wow, was like why would they sell this stuff here? And would it would it, it have been like a BDSM type place, like to sell leathers specifically, and then they added that yeah. as no, just like rock, uh, rock memorabilia. You know, there was a bunch of stores that like just like rock memorabilia. You know, they could get by like skull rings and stuff like that. But they had, yeah, like, but yeah, but Nazi stuff, really? Uh, really? Yeah, Fuck. you could buy like armbands and all kinds of shit like that. And, like, I, I we could see shocked. that in the. I could see that maybe in the seventies and early eighties yeah. before people no, realized. Was, well, admit this is going to put us out of business. No, this wasn't even like punk orient. You know, orientated. It was. um just kind of like just there. And it was, this would have been like first time I went to Montreal was 1988. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but, and it was there for years, like into the early nineties, those stores are all gone now, but. Oh yeah. Uh, completely. Yeah. But it wasn't just one store. It was like, it was like common up there. We were kind of shocked by it, you know? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I mean, you know, I was in the charity world for a while, but high pitch Mike, sort of that. And in an awful way, uh, <laughs> I uh, yeah, I heard yesterday was a lot of animosity on the wrap up show. I, I felt bad about it. Um, you know, uh, mostly Jason and Doug. N- well, no, it was Jason and Doug, but Jason took shots at everybody, and then Doug started taking shots at everybody. Fred, that's right. And uh, yeah, I took that shot at Fred, which J- Jason. So are Doug and Jason like almost a pace and Jason? No, 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 no. they're 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 fine. But but uh, Doug feels that a, a trust has been breached. Well, I think. J- Give me one sec. I'm just going to check on the wrap up show uh, rundown on Mark's Friggin and see what they're talking about because I don't, I have it. Obviously, I have the audio, but I just don't recall um, what they're talking about that it could have been so bad. Um, was it a fight between Jason and DePace? Jason and D- I, I don't know if it was DePace or Goodstein, and oh. I think it might have been might have been DePace, but yeah, uh, it's, let's see. Usually it's those two because they're like the opposite sides of the coin. So I took like, a look on the wrap-up show rundown on Mark's Friggin, guys. It says here, Gary and Doug talk about being goofed on. Uh, Gary said he was always told not to get upset about people goofing on him. He said that this guy, Wolfie, has been calling in a lot lately to do that. He said in the past he's had other people doing that, but this guy's really getting under his skin. Uh, the guy said that they could blame Howard because he was the one letting it go on. Uh, duh. Okay. Doug Goodstein came in and said he kind of blames Jason for what, what went on with the looting thing today. So they're making fun of Doug and taking the camera at 9-11. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, oh, yeah. The, cam- the camera went missing, and... Didn't they try to blame it on high pitch mic? Uh, forget no, took the no. Literally, literally, it was. Uh, it said <laughs> after playing the clip, uh, uh, Jason played. John played a clip of Howard goofing on Doug about the looting. After playing the clip, the guys asked Doug if he was mad at Fred for playing the sound effects of him breaking into a store and stealing a, ca- a camera. Doug said that he oh, was still okay. blaming Jason. Jason said all he did was put up a note about Doug taking taking a camera. Um, and anyway, I, I'll have to listen to that and see if it's worth going into another time. But, uh, either way, yeah. Goodstein was not too afraid of mixing it up. I kind of, because I vaguely remember something about, a, um, like a ca- studio camera went missing. No, and, I don't, um, this isn't that this was the, uh, oh, okay. this was the night, this was the nine 11 situation. Oh, okay. Yeah. Jason was upset too, because he called Doug a drama queen and nobody backed Jason up on the air and then off the air, almost everyone backed him up. But who, who would be scared to say? First of all, I don't think Doug's a drama queen. But who was scared to say Doug's a drama queen? I was. <laughs> Actually, I was. I, I mean, you know, I sort of agree. Doug can be a drama queen sometimes, but I don't want to. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to start that kind of relationship because then I say something and then he says something and Doug and I sort of. Well, have, he did make a veiled threat. I know he did. I, did you? Did what you did? Yeah. No. What did Doug do? What, what, he what? said. He said. You know. Uh, they were talking about whether I hold a grudge or not. I said, I don't think I hold a grudge. What people fuck with you? And then Doug said something like, um, well, you know, Gary, there's things I'd like to say about you and things I'd like to reveal about you, but I don't because I think you might hold a grudge. Uh, do I have your permission? I said, I don't know. I don't know what you're going to say. What yeah. the fuck does that mean? Well, exactly. Uh, well, they're totally right. Like the, the Howard TV guys would know they got they've got they filmed these guys for so long. They know exactly yeah. what kind of person Gary is and how he gets pissed off at people. Oh, yeah. When they're monitoring all the stuff. Never mind. They have I'm sure they got 
tape after tape that they could, you know, reveal stuff with, with Bowie, you know. Exactly, yeah. What is that? <laughs> Did you think, like, another Lewis thing was going to come out at that point? Uh, Doug and I get along pretty well. I, I, if Doug's got some, some beef with me, I'd be really shocked. But, but I'm, sure, I'm sure that he, you know, you got to understand something. Like, I was in the TV room today. They watch all of us in a way that most people do not watch other I people. I know. It's actually, I, I can't think about that either. Well, I'm going to tell you something. It's very disconcerting. And it should, <laughs> it should be disconcerting because they have audio. Of, <laughs> they, they have video of Gary that I know exists out there. And I, I, would, I would ask any of the Howard TV guys this. And I think I asked Richie this. I know DePace threatened that said to, about Gary that we have like a, a, like a reel. Of him even sleeping on the job, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't, he didn't exactly say what was on it. But if you if, if they say it's a real, it could be anything. Him picking his nose and eating it. It could be yeah. like you know sleeping. It could be him playing, uh, you know, with his phone when he should be doing something else. Text messaging. It could be him like you know drinking anything. Oh yeah, it's like the, a blooper reel for the yeah. The buoy. But I'm sure I'm sure there's tons of it, and uh, I, I I know some of them have, must have a copy of it somewhere. Oh yeah, yeah. Be like I walked in and they go, oh Artie's doing it again, and apparently Artie has some weird tick where he starts to like eat his arm, yeah, yeah, which yeah. I never noticed. But <laughs> but if you watch somebody on a screen every day isolated, I don't eat my arm. But they, that's what really like what that Willie product. I have like a uh, I do. It's like a, it's a nervous tick. It's like I just. And I never noticed that. And they go, and, and somebody goes, "Oh, Artie's doing it again." I must bite like the skin on my right, hand. Yeah. Right. So, so they, I'm sure oh. they could say, you know, Gary likes to pick, you know, his ear, or I don't know what I do, but you know, there's times they catch me off guard and they'll put an effect on that that I really laugh at, you know, and then I realize, my God, they're watching me every second. Uh, yeah, I've seen that before, and he's admitted that he says he's been doing that since forever, and uh, that was something. It was just like some nervous, nervous. habit. Yeah, yeah, nervous tick. Yeah, we had we had this guy. Um, he used to bite his hand like in in um, in high school. He was like a grade uh, lower than me. And um, and um, and this this guy. I don't know if you ever seen the movie um, Polyester with the Baltimore Foot Stomper. No, kind of looked. He kind of looked like that guy, the Baltimore Foot Stomper. But he um, used to bite his hand. And um, and if you took pennies and threw them on the floor, he'd like dive to the floor for pennies. <laughs> and he had this really weird uh, foot fetish. And if girls were wearing sandals, he'd like sit there and he'd start biting his hand. Then he'd reach over and grab their feet. And uh, he he did it to my sister. He went and asked my sister, can I help you put your boots on? You know, and um, he was a real, real nut. He actually worked at the grocery store I worked at. And um, that was when the Men at Work song, uh, Be Good Johnny, came out because his name was yeah. John. Oh and, wow! And they used to they used to sing "Be Good Johnny" if he started like you know getting ready to grab a girl's foot, and uh, they the, start singing "Be Good Johnny." You know the foot the foot fetish thing is so fucking weird. Um, I think yeah, I, I think I think I mentioned it on the show one time that I worked at a library and there was a guy that would drop pieces of Reese's peanut butter cups near where a girl was reading a book. And you'd think like the next stage is, oh, he's going to go pick him up and look under her skirt or something like that. No, he was waiting for he would wait for girls that, you know, when you're standing and you're reading, but you shift legs, you shift feet. He put them close by so that they'd shift their feet. When they shift their feet, they step on it and he would go to lick it off the foot that they stepped on. Wow. Like, well, that's that, that takes it to another level than uh, John, John, the, the foot, foot man. Yeah, no, this guy was. I don't want to say was, his real name. <laughs> yeah, well, this guy, I mean, he was thrown out many times because they complained about it. It was just the weirdest fetish I've ever seen. And I saw it. I saw it in action one time. I no. couldn't stop laughing because I didn't understand it. <laughs> well, this this was really weird. Like the, the penny, there was a, the penny thing too. It's like you'd roll a penny down the aisle in the, the classroom and right. you'd like see a penny and dive for it, you know? Weird. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, that's just that's, that's that's people. The one you said he ate his hand. I was just thinking of the beginning of Laverne and Shirley when Lenny yeah, or Squeaky like whoever that. Like, ah, like that <laughs> when the hot girl walks by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> love that. This isn't as extreme, but when I first started here, I didn't know this for a few months. They had a pool going as to which sports team T-shirt I'd wear the next day, right. and that went on and on and on until they finally <laughs> told me about that. It's like I'm even a little upset when we were at K Rock. The way my camera in my office worked was. When I had something to say to Howard, I would push the button down to talk, and that would turn my camera on for three minutes. Now the way it's set up is they, my camera's on all the time. So sometimes I'll be sitting there, and it, it was supposed to be, Gary, we'll never look at your camera unless we need it for the show. And then sometimes, like I'll hear the pace going in to come, hey, what are you eating? 
And I'm like, none of your fucking business. You're not supposed to. <laughs> And then, um, that's great that's great it's like did, it's like big brother you know watching you yeah well then richie said that they had a, had um saw him like take a big glob of peanut butter out of a, a jar with a spoon and eat sitting there licking it oh my they, that, god that was one of the ones that they um yeah that <laughs> that they thought was funny that he was like licking a spoon of peanut butter well, if you were if you if you were working out, let's say you needed some quick protein, yeah, yeah I've seen I've seen people do that all the time with a spoon yeah. or an, even just a butter knife, you know, just take a bit, uh, mm -hmm. eat it, and that was it for the, um, protein. For the protein. But it like Boo, you know, Bowie's not doing anything for what He's you know his weight weights. Come on, yeah, come on. But the thing uh, would be he, funny is him licking the peanut butter off his teeth was probably a riot. Oh yeah, like a Great Dane, you know, or somebody, yeah. you know. Look, or a fucking uh, like a, an Al Alsatian or some big dog, whatever. Yeah. Um, but uh, and bigger teeth as a result. To be looking. Yeah. So yeah. we're all always on camera, right? It, that that is very weird about um about this office, definitely. And Howard's the most self conscious about that out of anybody. If he really thought about that, but but yeah. but I'm telling you, if you brought the TV guys in here, they all can give you a list on every single one of us of weird things that we do. Because, they, I mean, like, Doug's been watching me every day for 12 years. Now, that was a, one of the funniest things in the Richie interview, like, talking to him, talking about the toothpicks and the dirt that they yeah. in, in Howard's console and the fucking yeah. toothpicks. Like, that's that's an awful habit. It wasn't until I was in my 20s where I learned, you know, when you're toothpicking, you're supposed to yeah. cover your mouth. You're not supposed to just lick there like, like an old guinea and go, like, oh, you know, flick stuff out, you know, and uh, you're supposed to make it look like you're, well, obviously, there's no yeah. denying you're, you got a toothpick, but you don't yeah. want people seeing your teeth as you're doing it. No, I have like those um, those little floss things that they're like mint flavored, and and I take a napkin and put it in front of it so it doesn't get all over my desk when I use it, you know, uh, or whatever, you know. I'll wait till I go back to my my where my desk is after yeah. I eat, but um, but yeah, you put something in so you don't get all these little things. But imagine what that console looked like. The keyboard's probably got um, looks like molasses swamp from the candy <laughs> <laughs> There's probably enough DNA in there to create a whole new stern. Um, I, I think. Well, the, the and and keyboards especially. I get very skewed out by the just the dust. You know, yeah. like I have dust protection on all my keyboards that I use, and then you still got to wash those covers, and I have to put them through like dish soap and hot water yeah. to get them really clean because your hands, the oil that naturally comes on your fingers, you know, and then the mouse mice and all those things. But if for him, it's probably nothing there. It's probably all kinds of food remnants, and you know pasta and almonds and whatever fucking bits are you know in that console is that's disgusting <laughs> jesus yeah. christ mm. you know what i mean so i'm sure every, you know every one of us has a weird habit and they know them have they picked up anything on you bench i mean people talk about you sweating and stuff but anything uh, else that you're aware I'm of sure when they put the camera on benji uh, he's like a fucking mood ring his, his face <laughs> turns it goes from pale to red yeah it does you're yeah. like a cherub <laughs> uh, let's talk about our uh, our lead guest today, who is Mary McCormick. And Artie, did you think? Did you really think she was pissed off at you because of? Uh, not, not pissed off is a strong term. I thought um, that maybe she just was like that day she came in. She had never met me before. She didn't know I got the job. It, it might have literally been my first day full time. Uh, which I know if you can go to the Museum of Broadcasting, they'll tell you that's uh, October 29th, 2001. And um, I uh, I just felt I annoyed her. I felt like I was a gnat. And I, th at that time, especially, if, if something's making Howard laugh, I ain't stopping. I don't give a fuck if the president's sitting there. And <laughs> I remember that episode. He started to do that British accent because he found out her, her uh, boyfriend was from, from England. And uh, he started like m mocking like he was talking like the guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. I did you ever, did you ever that. hear that? I, I don't, I, don't remember that. I don't remember okay. him doing that. All right, folks, I cut, I took the audio and I found the, uh, I, I made myself a personal edit so I could hear it from once in, for, from once in a while. Uh, October 26, 2001, I think already was off by a couple of days, but either way, um, I think I thought he said October 29th, but maybe I'm wrong, but either way, this is already, um, goofing on Mary McCormick. He finds out her boyfriend is from in, in London and, uh, he just starts doing this British accent and just is relentless for a few minutes. So I'll let it play out. Well, I go there. We meet in New York. He can he can do his job from here a little yes. bit. And How do you do your job from here? Yeah, you're producing you have a real job. Uh, I'll play in London oh here. My God. No. <laughs> I don't like this guy. Oh, stop. 
Stop it. Probably a high school drama teacher has a you totally know, bamboozled. Absolutely. Putting on West Side Story with his class. <laughs> Mary, I'm coming into town. <laughs> I'm going to be producing. I've acquired, acquired the rights. One of those <laughs> I've acquired the rights to a sequel to No No Nanette. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be wonderful. <laughs> yeah, bring him to us. We'll find out what he does. I'll, I'll meet you at Howard Johnson. Yeah, we need to improve this guy. Now, but I told yeah. him not to come. If he's so, if he's so happening, why doesn't Martin, he stay away today? If he's so happening, why doesn't he take you uh, somewhere exotic for a, uh, a, mean? a trip? A vacation? So a vacation, yeah. Why doesn't he Have take you, you somewhere? Have you been away with him anywhere? Yeah, does he take you anywhere? Uh, yeah, we've been away since. Where did he Where take you? Go? Where? Where does he <laughs> take you? We, I'm, I'm just going to make up stuff. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've been been to Hawaii and um, I don't Barbados. Believe I don't believe you've been any of those. I know places. we haven't actually. We haven't any time. I've been working and he's been working. Maddie, we're just lucky to see each other. Maddie, I think it's time for one of our Pittsburgh getaways. <laughs> <laughs> I put tickets on the train. What about so hiding behind all the cowardly? I've acquired the rights to reach too. I'm putting it on Broadway. So That's my Christmas gift. And has he, what has he produced? I want to know. No, I'm not going to talk about that. Talk about it. Anything we no. No, Name one play. Tons and tons. What play? No, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. You know what that right means? Now. That means there's no play we ever heard of. Okay. Okay. Produce, he runs the old Vic Theater in London. They produced Iceman Cometh. Iceman Cometh? I've never heard of that. That was wonderful. That was written 100 years ago. But it right. was written 100 years ago. Yeah. The production that was just done here right, in New York. Right. Oh. The four hours. I'm sure he's a very nice. Theater. It's the oldest theater in London. We're teasing I know, but I mean, you know. Of course, you've heard of the Iceman Cometh. Oh, <laughs> so I'll play it out, guys. There's only a little bit more, but th that was already like, like when he was early on, he 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 had to pick his spots. He couldn't be as on the mic as he wanted, but I mean, he could still be so fucking brilliant. Eventually, anytime they mentioned English guys, he'd always have the word fruit thrown in there. You know? Oh, he's easily, yeah, whatever, yeah. yeah. Mary, Mary. I, I produce Iceman Cometh. <laughs> it's like all dramatic. Mary. Mary, I'm thinking of another Iceman Cometh. <laughs> No, no, no. What is he doing now? <laughs> now that I must see you. We're <laughs> <laughs> just jealous. We want to date you. That's all. We want to date you. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they're just goofing on her for no, like, it just come. it was so organic. I love when they would do that. He's going to do a little bit of that here, but uh, not much. So that's why I thought I'd, I'd give that a, a, a fucking listen. But um, what's your take on the Mary McCormick situation? Because a lot of people... And I, I didn't think this originally. I thought the whole condom gate thing with Ralph uh, and those the rubbers on the trail, the rider for private parts were for him and and Howard, yeah. not for. But some pe some people believe that he fucked Mary McCormick as well. I can't imagine that. I just um, I I don't know. I, I I really think it was more to, to do with Ralph. But we had one of the bim like bimbos, the scores bimbos, if um if that's possible. Um, you know, that was that's another thing, a whole nother can of worms with the scores. Like you used to talk up these scores girls. And yeah. then when you finally saw them in the book, I'm like, they, these girls are not hot. They're creepy kind of looking, you know. Um I've uh, seen like I've seen really good strippers in Montreal. That's oh, like big Montreal's time. like that's my um That's my ground zero. Guy. Right. That's that's so pre that's the, the the best strip best strip clubs in right. that I've ever been to were in Montreal. And then when I saw these scores girls, I'm like, that's this is what he's crowing about. He needs a trip to Montreal. I remember yeah. we there. There's this one um, strip club near. Uh, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say near Ajax, which is just outside of Toronto. But I, th I think it was there, but I'm not 100 percent sure. We went there for my brother-in-law's bachelor party, and I, you know, my my his best man is a guy I love. He's really just a phenomenal guy, really entrepreneur. Big deep pockets, generous, super nice, friendly. Anyway, he uh, <laughs> we takes us to this place. All the girls had names. They were named after cars. So this one was called Porsche, <laughs> and this one was called Ferrari, and all this shit. <laughs> there's yeah, this older Mercedes. one in the corner. There's this older one in the corner. She kind of like looked a little shop worn. I go, what's her name? Ford Escort. <laughs> <laughs> Grumman. Gr yeah, exactly. Pinto. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> But uh, they, uh, it, he, you know, you could take a for. It was definitely like a hookup joint too, though. So, and I think a lot of those places end up being that way. But you, if yeah. you paid a little money, they'd take in the back yep. and you know do whatever you wanted. Well, there were places on the outskirts of Montreal that my friend of mine told me there were absolutely hookup places. And yeah. I actually, like, I, 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 
there's a whole nother story. Um, somebody I know, like, could, they, they, there's one, it was all Filipino strippers. Okay. And, um, they, they kept them, kind of corralled them all in this building, an apartment building or whatever. And um, you could go back with them. They had, like, a guy that would drive them back in a bus. It was almost like they were, like, slaves or something. And it was oh, a real man. seedy thing. I, I was married, so I didn't have any part of it. I, right. I said, you guys go do what you want. I'm going to go to the punk club or whatever and end yep. up going to um, industrial bar up there. But um, but yeah, that, that I know that kind of stuff absolutely went on up there. Oh yeah, it certainly it certainly had scores. I mean, that with all the stories you hear oh, about yeah. them and yeah, like we know that it did go on. But um, yeah. and uh, the, what what I get pissed off what I get pissed off about scores is we'll never know a hundred percent of the background details, all of the real truths, who went in there, who got service, drugs, the drug aspects of it, like more particulars of who was there, all the people that were guilty of this. I really wish that they put out a movie like, you know, like they have one for the limelight and they have one for um, that other place in Montreal, the other club up there. And they have like, you know, like Party Monster and those kind of documentary movies. I wish they'd put out like a movie or a book for scores like the, uh, you know, well, they did. That did that Jennifer Lopez one uh, was called Hustlers or something like that, but oh, it was crap. That's based on that's it based on scores, but uh, oh, I, I it's no. it's loosely based on scores. Like I don't even uh, know that they I, I I haven't seen it, but I don't know that it's a. Uh, it's as accurate a representation as it's supposed to be. I mean, like, even studio, even the film Fifty Four, wasn't yeah. as good as it should have been. Right. You know about oh, yeah, Studio Fifty Four. Yeah, they made it into like a, a fan fiction kind of thing or whatever. But um, the real story is way better. Yeah. The, um, the Potty Monster movie is pretty close to the book. I thought they did a good job with it. Um, and then there's that other place that, like I said, there's a movie about um, the club up in Montreal, too. That was, um, you know, like one of those notorious clubs, like a Studio 54 kind of thing. Well, there's also like 24 hour party people about yeah, that, uh, that's good. that. Well, yeah, uh, at the factory or whatever in uh, yeah. in uh, in uh, London. Hacienda. Was it London or Man- Hacienda? Sorry, yeah, Manchester. Um, yeah. In Manchester, yeah. yeah. No, I was like, was the one I was thinking of was also um, there's an. I think I mentioned it. There's a, a documentary on Plato's Retreat called American Swing. Uh, wow. It was released in 2008. If you want, I got a copy. I can send it to you. Um, yeah, I'd like to see it's, it. It's great. It's absolutely fantastic, and it is kind of it is kind of sad in the end because of how those places go belly up, and they they do almost are not remembered. You know, they just die a natural death, and they're gone. Like especially in New York, clubs come and go. The people that were there sort of remember, but then it becomes a kind of haze because yeah. you were there when you were imbibing, and you don't remember everything. And it, most people went there to get fucked up, and you know, and all of a sudden your memories <laughs> they're not as reliable as they should be. Well, a lot of those places, too, the people, they're not around anymore because a lot of them died from AIDS, a lot of the DJs and oh, certainly, you know, people yeah. that, didn't, that didn't make it through. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm always in, um, up for documentaries about clubs, clubs and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, it's, it's weird because, you know what, as a matter of fact, we're so into getting stuff out of the archives these days. I would love for somebody to pull that day for me because... It's a voice I haven't done since. It's weird. Like, it was a, just a stupid, like, English accent that was more just, you know, goofy than good or anything. But um, it came up that her boyfriend was in London. He oh, right. produced plays. He was an English guy. And um, was it, didn't he have a weird name? Was his name Barnabas or something like that? I forget. But, but I kept saying. I, <laughs> I don't think so. But that Barnabas. would have been even better. Can you imagine? Barnabas Collins. Sound like. Thurston Howell, that's who he sounds like, like Thurston Howell. The, More than yeah. an English, English guy, he just sounds like a rich English guy or something. Yeah, yeah, a, a lord. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. And I know, John's going to know why I know this play, and you probably will too. No, no, Nanette. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the guy, the play that Babe Ruth was sold for to produce. And I, that just kept coming to my mind, and I kept saying stuff like, uh, the premise was I was Mary's boyfriend sitting at a cafe in London missing her. And, um, you know, real dramatic about my life, like... Uh, 
Mary, I've purchased the rights to a play called No Known and End. <laughs> As I put pen to paper, I can't think of the last. I can't help but think of the last time we made love. <laughs> the stupidity, and he, Howard, just laughed at. It. He found it very funny, and I must have done it for an hour. And uh, it's, a, it's an exaggeration. People, they probably like. I just got. I clipped three. We yeah. listened to three minutes. There's the clip itself is almost four. I'd say he went on for. You know, he he brought it back here and there for like fifteen or twenty minutes, but it wasn't that long. Uh, it's weird. Will Ferrell, when I saw him later when we were doing Old School, he happened to be listening that day with his wife, and he said him and his wife thought it was the funniest thing they ever fucking heard. Uh, they said, yeah, that was actually pretty good, that character you're doing. I go, really? It's not a ca it's, I've never done it since. And I don't I'd love to hear that whole day, because I want to hear if in her voice it, you could tell how annoyed she is, because Howard would laugh, Robin would be laughing, and then you're alone in that room, you know? So she would look over at me, can confused and would not know what to do and uh i didn't stop it was a pounding and um howard didn't throw her a life preserver i thought that was a nice compliment by will ferrell uh saying like you know like that i i heard you and that might have been how he got the gig for old school um i know he worked oh, yeah. with him on elf and old school was later i think or just hold on let me see the chronology or was it the same year elf hold on they were pretty close together when, uh, 2003 yeah, and elf i think were the same year and, and todd phillips did he also direct um okay uh road trip or star scenes uh, yeah no no john favreau directed elf i forgot that old school yeah uh anyway uh, i'd say that uh will farrow probably asked for him for one film after he saw he was good in the other because guys like will they would totally name drop people they'd like to work yeah. with that aren't that aren't going to be pains in the asses that are going to do it in one take or two takes yeah. and they're going to be good and um and that they like ultimately that's an amazing compliment from considering how big will smith uh, sorry will smith will uh, farrell is yeah and the idea that he would tap Artie to do that maybe for the one if he was working on the other and that's the same as uh ivan reitman saying i want billy west for uh, space jam I think, um, well, Adi was only playing bit parts. I remember I saw him in, uh, was it called Boat Trip? Yeah. He played like a gay guy in that, like that. And he, set them you're up right. On the gauge cruise, yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to trying to think what other movies that, because there was a time that he was in a bunch of like bit parts. Yeah. Uh, hold on, Boat Trip. Let's see. Boat Trip. Actually, you're right. That might have been where they get first started working together. It was 2002. So maybe that's where he... Um, he got in tow with Artie because he had to do a scene with Artie. They were selling him like a, a ticket or something. They were selling yeah. him like a, a cruise ticket and they put him on a gay cruise. <laughs> They're supposed yeah, to be to gay in the back. movie. Just Artie said something on the, the revenge. he said something on the show, like, you know, in the, in the script, it was supposed to be like him and Will Ferrell were supposed to kiss. And he said, look, I got Italian uncles. They'll never talk to me again. So yeah. just kiss me on the cheek. <laughs> 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 and he did in the film. And, uh, I'd say, yeah, that must've been it. Yeah. 2002. And then getting, getting work together for elf and then old school. That's, that's when you, in, in show business, that's when people can save you. Chris Rock tells a great story in, um, I think it was uh, the I think it was the Chris Farley show that book. He um, he mentions how he was down on the balls of his ass, and Farley put him in um, uh, what was it, Beverly Hills Ninja? Um, and he said, "Look, I I I needed." bits i needed work absolutely and he totally like went to bat for me and and I, I i owe him so much because i was not successful and uh he was in sergeant bilko i remember and chris rock was saying look i had to take whatever i could get just to mm -hmm. get back into the hollywood machine again because i was nowhere and um these are people like you said snl guys <clears throat> they can be very loyal that way and help yeah. you out when you really need it and that's i i think that's a great thing actually is it nepotistic in a way but that's the way the business works anyway well adam sandler he, he pulled all those guys right along with them mm -hmm. um, then he, then he produced those grown-ups movies and you know that yeah. david spade was gonna say good this is a payday i could use absolutely rob schneider yeah. especially too yeah so so I just felt she was very annoyed right. by me. Yeah. You, know, you know, it's funny. I'm I'm working on a special similar to the one that Ralph did, which is sort of just my favorite moments mm -hmm. from the show. 
and I just wrote one down that Artie reminded me of, but there's two of them that involve Artie for sure. One of them is, it's you fucking with gas. One of my favorite moments from the show was you and Courtney Love when you were doing that spinning plates music to her stream of consciousness. But the other one you reminded me of, which is sort of in the Mary McCormick vein, yeah. was you and Leah Remini. That's exactly right, right. exactly. That is one of my, she was sure that you were fucking with her and she wanted to fight she you. Wasn't in the, she didn't think you were in the movie she with her. Movie. And then she, you were, yeah, she was being just really <laughs> out of line, I and then you were And then you were just giving it right back to it. It was a riot. Yeah. I, I I said, uh, well, I'm an old school. She's like, yeah, sure you are. What are you, an extra? I'm like, well, no, actually, I'm in it. I, technically, I think I'm in it more than her. <laughs> and uh, and but the thing was, here's what got me about that. She knew. She knows who I am. I met. She was friends with Nicole Sullivan. I met her at Mad TV. She was being a cunt, like for some reason. <laughs> she she wanted to fuck. B- bus chops and it she was, wouldn't let it go. I was like, all right, listen, Leah, I mean, you know, whatever, we, you know, we're fine, but it was so uncomfortable because it was so real because then she's like, no, really, you weren't. And I, and I remember I sat next to her on the couch and I go, Leah, he's in the movie. She's like, yeah, right, all right, give me another one. You know? <laughs> you know, the one I was thinking of offhand was Dina Meyer. She came in to promote this show called Birds of Prey. It was like a Batgirl oh, yeah. type show way back in the day. I never saw it. It died a horrible death Black before Canary, I even got a chance yeah. to. Uh, or Black, was it Black Canary? Yeah, I think it was Black Canary, um, Batgirl, and uh, who was the other? In Huntress. Okay. Anyway, it, it died a horrible death, and she came in, and I always found her really cute and sexy, actually. And she was kind of, um, at the time, hitting on, like, flirting with, with Howard, of all people. Which, yeah. maybe she's like, I don't know, she's got some kind of bird fetish. But, um, yeah. she and she got into with her, when she left, already... <laughs> And he started talking about her, like, like she seems a little, you know, up her own ass kind of thing. And this was at K-Rock. They couldn't swear. And then she came back in the studio and started giving Artie shit. She started mixing it up with him. Then when she left, the, he goes, you know, yeah, she didn't. She doesn't want to be famous. Was this her, like, third third return into the show? You know, like, whatever. <laughs> she came back and she kept fucking with him. And I love that. I love that type of interaction. What um what movie was um, Leah Remini, Remin, whatever, with, um, Remini? in with Artie? Yeah, Remini, yeah. What old school. She oh, in old school. She plays oh. Will Ferrell. She plays Will Ferrell's uh, wife. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I haven't seen that for years and years. Yeah, uh, it's one of the few like Will. Uh, sorry, Vince Vaughn films I could rewatch. It, it was funny. The only thing I remember is them going streaking or something. That's the only. Thing that 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 was about. the part where she picks him up in the minivan. She's with her, her oh, okay. girlfriends yeah. and he's streaking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I liked it. I don't know how well it holds up. I, I, I think it's I think it's pretty funny considering. Um, yeah. And there's certain aspects of it you certainly couldn't do anymore. <laughs> it's, it's really like yeah, Revenge yeah. of the Nerds when he, you know, essentially date rapes. He doesn't date rape, but it's what is it? Mistaken identity he takes the girlfriend thinking, you know, wearing a mask yeah. and uh, goes down on her. Like, I'm sure that would get you in some kind of trouble today. Oh, yeah. Well, that that was like, yeah, in Revenge of the Nerds, maybe he's wearing the Darth Vader mask. Right. Like, you know, um, yeah. That's the scene. Um, I, <laughs> but then making fun of the Japanese, <laughs> like, oh, um, yeah. like, uh, what's he go? Uh, what are robster craws? <laughs> and, well, on top of that, they were playing, remember in Revenge of the Nerds, like when he's riding the tricycle and yeah. they kept giving him beers, so they, they came up with that con- the concoction that, that, that fake, fake drug. Yeah. yeah. But the, they're playing like something bicycle built for two, but it's like a Chinese version of it. Uh, uh, well, Japanese ridiculous. version. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't know what it, what version. It just sounds like some kind of Asian thing, you know. Oh, it was Did definitely Japanese. It was it was the it was the guy. It was the actor singing it. Oh, really? Oh, okay. yeah. He he I sang the version that was on the film, and it was some yeah some I don't oh. know exactly, but um, and <laughs> I remember the yeah, drug because I used to watch it so much. It was they called it trichloromethylene. <laughs> <laughs> But it was, I think the song was Bicycle Built for Two. Like oh, a, maybe. You know, Daisy. It's like, yeah, it's like from, you know, from 2001. Doesn't that Daisy, Daisy, whatever, you know? But, um, oh, from the from the movie. Yeah, no, I, I maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I'll, have to ch- I'll have to re-listen to it. I don't remember Did that you ever aspect. Hear, um, it. Do you ever hear Tighten Up by um, Yellow Magic Orchestra? Well, they I know the, the I know the Archie Bell and the Drells song. If that's, yeah. is that, is that, a, that's the cover? Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. it's um they do it as like oh you know they do it like as a goof on themselves. Oh it's okay, re- it's really funny. Yeah, I'll have to uh, check get it a out. Chance to, but yeah, they put it out. It's um they used to actually play it on on the alternative station in Boston here, but um yeah it's it's um tighten up or whatever. It's like Japanese men take photograph, you know. You that's know, that's where really, that's where you that's the only place you'd be able to hear it, I suppose. Yeah, 
and it's it's yeah. on it's on their albums it's um but yeah it's a and they do it like oh you know like that really goofy you know just like yeah. out and out japanese stereotype but it's it, it's them doing it to themselves you know but, to check uh, it if out. you want to laugh listen to it okay she had the biggest i love her but she has the biggest chip on her shoulder she, yeah. even when people were in the i remember when she was like getting like interns were getting releases she was like yelling like why are you looking at me why are you looking at me why like when people were just walking by doing their job well, I, 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 I had a great moment with her off the air that i love she was booked to do our show right and then one night I'm driving home and I'm listening to those guys in Washington, Don and Mike, and I guess she was friends with them. All right. And they spent the whole night yelling at her that she's their friend and how dare she, you know, how dare she go on <laughs> Howard. But they really meant that they were really bummed out. So the next morning I get a phone call that Leah has canceled, right? So I get a hold of Vinny. Vinny goes to the top, top people at CBS. Basically, Howard was pissed. He's like, fuck them. So we go to the top people at CBS and she gets a phone call. Right. From like the top people at CBS, like get your fucking ass into the oh, that's show. hilarious. So now the phone rings, and the intern says to me, "Leah Remini's on the phone." And I could see already this is going to be an ugly fight, right? <laughs> so she goes, uh, "I pick up the phone," and she goes, "So you want to fight?" <laughs> and I go, and I, "So I go, listen, you're supposed to be on our show." Da, 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 and I fucking carry on. I go, "You were fucking booked," and I heard you on that show. Da, 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 and I I run out of steam, and there's this long pause, and she goes, "I was kidding." And I had just fucking yelled at her for like ten minutes, and that's what. I, but I, I like that about her. I mean, she's always yeah, looking I mean, to fuck with you. She's. I can see Gary being like that with certain guests, thinking you know, oh, yeah. like, but like, but knowing, but knowing that the anxiety of what's he going to do to how, what's Howard going to do to him when he explains yeah, right. that a guest has been canceled at the last minute. I'm surprised he didn't fold right away when she. You want to fight? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know. Yeah, that's what I figured too. But I guess it's because yeah. a woman. He, it's because it's a woman. He thinks he can. He can go toe to toe. I just think he'd be worried, worried too much about it getting back to Howard that he pissed off a guest, and Howard that not backing him. Me too. Yeah. I mean, maybe maybe he's remembering it as Rambo, but he was actually, you know, yeah. fucking. Yeah, right. Ill, he was Eliza Doolittle, but who knows? Yeah. Feisty. Definitely. She's funny. Yeah. But she's one of those chicks. I grew up in Brooklyn when right. she didn't grow up in Brooklyn. Where'd she grow up? No, like she, she, was, but she left when she was eight years old. Oh, I see. You know, when she was like 13, she left. So are you... Uh, How do you know? I remember, because she's a hot Jew. He used to do the notes on She's a too. Jew? Yeah, she's a Scientologist Jew. Italian. Oh, that's right. She said Scientologist. Yeah. Then we started going nuts yeah, on that's Scientology. Yeah. And that sort of... In fact, the Scientology thing uh, has made us lose many guests. You know who left here? Shell Shock. What was it? Chick Catherine that? Bell. That was yeah. another one I know. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I'm putting that on my head. <laughs> she called me a knucklehead. <laughs> she had... Uh, uh, you know I've just uh, changed my special from Gary's Favorite Moments to the uh, best of uh, Artie. Artie, Artie fucks with guests. <laughs> Please, you know what? Just do me one favor. Get the Mary McCormick one on there. I will. You know what? Because I'm just I'm dying to hear that. Hey, but Gary, how about like just the whole guest who left really pissed? Now, Catherine Bell, who was more famous from, I guess, the film, the show Jag, um, that was that was her big thing. But she was also in a film I love called uh, Men of War. <clears throat> um, and uh, she was I think she's of Lebanese descent and she might have been one of the most fucking naturally beautiful women in the business you've ever seen. Do you remember I her? Vag I vaguely remember Jag. I don't think I watched it, but I remember seeing ads for it. But I'm not, I don't know who she is. Same producer as NCIS. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah he always that. used those like naval, because I guess he, yeah, he yeah. himself was in the service. Um, was it, um, was it ca the captain from um, Enterprise? Was he on that? Uh, you got me. My wife would, yeah. would watch it all the time. I, I, I only... Leap. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and when one of the leads, he's Australian. He was in that film I oh, mentioned. Okay. He committed suicide really young. Um, and he I was, was uh, another he, one he was that was like on that show, you know, like Navy lawyers or something like that. That was it. Uh, oh, okay. Well, maybe that was yeah, so, um, the guy that played in Quantum Leap. Was he on that? You know, you know he Scott was, Bakula? Yeah. Be on that? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, uh, but let's check. You never know. Let's I see. There was a show that he was like a Navy lawyer or. Something like that after Enterprise tanked. Uh, okay, let's see. Donald Belisario. Yeah, that's the producer. Uh, who was the star? David James Elliott was this guy. Oh, uh, okay. And, um, yeah. yeah, anyway. Probably thinking of another show. Yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah, no worries. 
Well, well, Vicky, you know don't what? fuck with my special. I'm sorry. I mean, whatever. Vicky <laughs> probably knows of a chick, chick he pissed Were off. you here for Michelle Rodriguez? Did you piss her off, too? No, but, but she's, she's awesome. That's, what, that's I got great. That, I got that one. Well, of my I might have been one of the 2,000 things that pissed her off. <laughs> no, she was great. We got to have her on satellite because she just, as soon as I called her, fuck with her. Now, she's from Jersey City. That I know because <laughs> she was, like, you know, didn't left you there until she's, like, 20. And as soon as a, a caller, like they will on the show, hey, hey Michelle, I... What? You look kind of fat. She would go, fuck you, dick gun. <laughs> her, 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 best, her best line was, she's like, oh, knife. my God, what did you do? Brush your teeth with a shit sandwich? <laughs> yeah. Wasn't she threatening to, like, knife people and stuff? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. She, she was. She was I'll fucking cut you. <laughs> I'll have to check that one out. I don't remember this. The ones that um, that I used to love that, I know we don't really, really talk about whack pack stuff, but um, when Adi used to go at it with Crazy Alice, that, that oh. was like some of the, the funniest stuff. And then in the, there was another one where he really got going with Beetlejuice. And, yeah. Um, and he was when, like, oh, when, Mr. When, when Mr. T was in. Yeah. Yeah. I love and that. Then, uh, you said like, my problem is Beetlejuice doesn't admit he's gay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he's I love really that one. Furious. So it's like, well, you know, if you just admit you are gay and he'd like say yeah. it is so calm. And then, then you, like Mr. T would calm it all down. Right. Man, what a, that, what a circus that episode was. But that that, was, that's that, like, that's like one of the funniest things that he like that that Beetlejuice one. That was the best. And then I already tried to backtrack. Like, so oh, I'm sorry, man. I didn't realize you're real mad. And then I believe Beetlejuice was just going nuts. And then um, <laughs> already I think said something like, yeah, "That's okay." A minute later, he's not even going to remember it happened. But in that case, he wouldn't back down. He was really, really pissed off. Oh, I yeah. remember Beetle was pissed. And then Mister Chico, Be- Beetlejuice, that's not good. That's not good. There's kids listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's kids listening. And Mister T's like oblivious to the whole thing that he's just trying to get him going. You know. Yeah, yeah. And he's and you know, Ad- Adi says he's sorry. Our Adi said he's sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. That's that's definitely one for the arc. We definitely have to check that one. But the the crazy Alice stuff. The only problem I have with it is audio wise, it might be a little hard on the the listeners' heads. But I would love to do uh, a couple of those football picks with Elliot off and just listen, just go, laugh at them because yeah. when they did the football pool with Artie and they would call in just Bigfoot and then <laughs> Elliot off and, <laughs> well, I and crazy the- Alice. Tracy Alice, he's like, I remember the funniest he's just like, he's like, look, you, you look like an old leather couch. A brown couch. The yeah. side of the road, you know, an old brown couch. And oh, she God. was like going, fuck you, fuck you, you know, going off on him. Let and, me just um, see. That, let me just, let me play just a little of those to see if I can got, I get them. Hold on. We listened to, um, we listened to that like at work and, uh, <laughs> and um, we back then it was back and, you know, when you could do this and we all listened to it. I had an FM transmitter and I transmitted out to like all the radios on everybody's workstations. And uh, yep. we were all like all in tears, like none of us could work because we were laughing so hard when he uh, when he was fighting with Crazy Alice. Oh, loved it. It was just you couldn't you couldn't write that. And, um, and she that's when so the show was at up. its best. She got so wound up and then they'd quiet down yeah. uh, and then he go back at her. Let's see if I got this one. Uh, football. There's Hold one on. guy, one guy I worked with, and he'd be in tears to the point where he couldn't breathe. And it made me <laughs> laugh even more seeing him do that, you know. <laughs> like, you know what, I might have to go to YouTube for this. I know I have the clips. I just don't know exactly where uh, where they're located uh, and how to find them. Guys, we're going to play a little bit of Crazy Allison already. This one's just uh, on a, he's actually a pretty good channel. It's called Mr. Blood Clot. That's B-L-U-D-C-L-O-T. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and we're just going to play a little of it. Fuck you. Fuck you, cocksucker. You're a shithead. I don't want to fuck you. <laughs> I don't fuck your fat mama next. Why don't you strap on a fake dick and fuck off. yourself? Why don't you go fuck? Well, at least if I put on a strap on, it'd be way bigger than your little pain ass dick. But that's the point of a strap. I think you can even see your dick. You're so goddamn fat. I'll show right. you my dick when I'm shoving you, it in you your like mouth. You like a fucking man. Man, you like a, you like a fucking man. All right, let's get to the pics. I'm ready to have a banger. You never once pregnant, you bitch. Alice, what do you like uh, this week in football? <laughs> I say Broncos. Broncos. Ah, what an asshole pick. What's that wrong is. with that pick? <laughs> Hold on. That way you said the last two pass. It that sucks. He lost. All right, the Broncos are getting seven and a half for the Patriots. I don't want to listen to a loser. Shut the fuck up. That's no, Gary. Shut the fuck up, no, you this, fucking I, animal. Oh. Shut the fuck up. I hate you, you fat cocksucker. And everybody call out them out there. You're going to hell with that fat fucking cocksucking daddy. Hmm. 
All right, Gary, what did you say? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> she just, you know how, you, the first of all, you know how fucking exhausting it is to be that oh, yell, that loud and that, that angry? Imagine the neighbors, the neighbors here in this. I can't only imagine. She said at one point she, she was in the bathroom on the phone yelling like that because oh, yeah, yeah. they actually the tiles at, but actually I think that would add more echo because of the way the tiles, oh, yeah. you know, uh, you know, could She's reverberate like, and stuff. The bathroom where I take a shit. Yeah. Oh God. He was so, I, I remember him saying, get on the fat wagon and come down to the studio. <laughs> <laughs> the fat wagon. <laughs> Do you remember like uh, Richard and Sal like took all these clips and put them together in a crank phone call where she's like some possessed like they called up a nun or something and yeah um, she's supposed to be like possessed by a demon yeah you know that that one's really that's one of the better crank phone calls they did back when they did them real you know she was so money on that show it was unbelievable yeah. <laughs> I caught you, motherfucker. <laughs> That's what you were saying. We kept having to, to bleep her. Right. But the Catherine Bell thing was we found out she was a Scientologist. Right. And <laughs> and Howard was being insulting, too. But he's like, so what do you mean? Like, what does Scientology mean? Like, I think it means like you believe in ghosts and stuff. And she goes, no. And every, <laughs> and every time she looked at me, I would just go, boo. <laughs> 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 that would have been uh, K-Rock days, and I'm sure there's a Howard TV episode. Uh, I could find a, a one like that, but I'll have to look it up. I don't remember it being memorable, as memorable as that, but uh, it might be. Who knows? It was an ironic that like they were goofing on Scientology stuff, and then Wiggy gets into getting things done, which probably isn't too much different. I, from what I understand, it's not different. It's not much different at all, it, it, except that Scientology is a bona fide. I mean, they'll call it a re religion for yeah. the sake of saving tax breaks and shit um, and loopholes. But uh, getting things done borrows heavily from Scientology, from what I understand. Wonder, wonder how much money um, Wiggy dropped into this stuff or whatever to get, you know, GTD. Uh, yeah. Does anybody probably a that? lot, probably a lot less than he did to like TM, which doesn't require a lot comparatively, except that they do a lot of fundraisers, she, she fundraisers. And it can cost because of what I understand from t transcendental meditation, it's, it's free essentially until you can afford to drop the thousand dollars or something, whatever, 3000 or 2000 or whatever. And then, you know, you pay one time thing. As far as I know, I could be wrong about this. Yeah. I have to look it up. Well, I thought I thought when he did TM was way back, you know, and probably like the late sixties, maybe, and um, I, I or later, like early seventies, where it wasn't that expensive, and you kind of did it over like a weekend, like a two day yeah, thing, and a retreat. And then you just drop you drop the money, then they give you your mantra, and you're on your own. I didn't know you that had to keep going back. Oh uh, yeah, no, I, I think, well, no, you don't, but you, you practice it regularly. You're supposed to, yeah. I guess the way they say it. Once, and yeah, you, you drop coin, you, you drop, it's a one time only thing, but yeah. I, I think it is substantial. It's not like 50 bucks either. So I got this clip guys this is from a, a baseball wrap up show. No, a sports wrap up show that we'll play one time. Maybe me and Wade will do it because it's just so much fun. Point was, you know, and I'm uh, look, there's great chick athletes who could beat me and everything. I get it. But normally if you're playing ping pong with a bunch of friends, mixed couples and stuff, or if you're playing basketball, or if you're in a pool. fucking softball game or shooting pool, and a girl goes, I want to play, <laughs> and these faggot guys let them play, uh, like in a fucking softball game, we're supposed to, like, I'll give her another strike. No, don't give her another strike. She struck the fuck out. No, don't be a douchebag. Like, no, then why are we even playing if we're not taking it seriously? <laughs> When a chick plays catch, 90% of the time they throw, you know, like a gay guy, like Sal throws, like these guys throw, like Jason, Thanks. and the ball goes eight feet over your head, and you're like, you're not allowed to go, fuck you, cunt, you just threw it over my head. You're supposed to go, that's great, Jenny. Right. If they're good looking, maybe, but I'm not tolerating an ugly broad with a bad arm. <laughs> he was so fucking real. He was so street. I love that about him. Oh, you couldn't even um, can imagine talking like that on the show now. Oh Christ, no! And then, like, just in general, like on on just, on talk shows or whatever, he's just a throwback. But just being real at all, even without the the lang the the fruit talk, you know, or yeah, gay talk, or, you know, yeah, just being honest. Well, like it, I asked Len about this. I said, "Do you think that Artie, if he'd had the the right promotion and the right 
manager actually to do this would have had some kind of good following in in the UK. And he said, just definitely amongst like the you know the blue collar you know yeah. football fans and pub pub crowd. You know, he crowd, absolutely yeah. would. He would absolutely would kill in thousand seaters. You know, like twelve hundred seaters. People wanting to hear him. You know, like a, a Jersey jerk off and. Um, not that his standup was so good. It could be. That's the thing. He had some material that was actually very good. It's just that he relied so much on the show and these and being drunk. And if he had mm-hmm. to do real standup shows, like if you ever did the Fringe Festival in Edinburgh, he could he get laughed off the stage. But if he actually had a club, like a, a crowd that knew about him and um, knew what was coming with the dinner, he I think he could kill. Well, I wonder how he how he, he did in uh, Montreal for the Just for Laughs festival, where like they Howard wasn't really being aired up there. But I wonder mm-hmm. how he did for the stand up on that because all those comics went up there for that every year. I was up there one year for it. He he went to he did the Just for Laughs festival. Yeah, I think he went up there a few years. Yeah, I know. I know. Like um, you know, the whole Bennington they went up there and. Um, Opie and Anthony and all all that crowd went up there. Norton played up the um, the filthy show, whatever it's called. And but I think Adi Adi went up there a few times for that too. I wonder how he did like up there with that kind of thing where it's not his stern based audience, you know? Well, I think there were still stern fans in Canada, but not I mean not not to the extent certainly because it just didn't air. But there would be people seeking that stuff out. And if they knew Artie was going to be in Montreal, they'd make the pilgrimage to go see him. Somehow my friends that's how I met my friends from Montreal. They um through um a Jackie the Joke Man um like a, a Jackie the Joke Man chat room. And, mm-hmm. um, so they would they were getting now that you mentioned it, they were getting the show somehow before it was on the air up there. I don't know if they were getting it um, out of the New York feed, or I'd like, say um, so. Yeah, like my, we were we were uh, closest to I guess Syracuse. Um, like in terms of, and I had a shortwave radio in built into my ghetto blaster, or, or not mine, yeah. a family ghetto blaster. That when the reception was really good, you could pick up some New York stations for certain. Oh, okay, so yeah, maybe yeah. that's how you'd get a crowd yeah. up there. Yeah. Uh, and I, I kept, I said boo like four times and she, she almost started crying and she said, what's with this knucklehead? <laughs> Wait, you know what? I got to go back and find out. There, there was a nice tits. Though. If you're talking about, because th- this is a new special. I just scrapped my special for the best of Artie fucking with women. And there's, th- we went through this period of time where for the gossip game, we would take like really like B and C celebrities <laughs> who were in movies. And some of them you had such disdain for. They would be like some dumb hot chick who was in like some dumbass movie and Artie would just torture them but it would be so funny yeah uh, when, who was in fact you know what i gotta put down the first what, what's the girl um you need a lot of paper for what's that the, what's the girl's name that uh the playboy playmate with spades baby uh, oh wow well, oh yeah Julie Julie, Grace, i mean when you did that whole thing about her boyfriend yeah that, <laughs> her, <laughs> when she first said she's in playboy and then uh yeah yeah uh the list is getting long. Why? Like, no, because no, it was like her boy, her poor boyfriend. You know? Hey, how come? How come Shaquille O'Neal's on your desk? <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the funniest things ever. That was, and also the weirdest things. Her mother asked if she could be in, like, to evaluate. Jillian Grace asked oh, yeah, her yeah. mother. Her mother asked to be on the show so she could be evaluated for Playboy, and sure, certainly she was smoking hot. Not my type, but well, isn't that the thing? Is like Ciotti didn't care because he wasn't into the whole star thing. No, he wasn't. Wiggy got uh, Wiggy got into. So if they had people on the show, they you know he didn't care if they, he pissed them off and you know and goofed on them to their face. You know, dude, you know, Wiggy would. Especially if they deserved it. If they, I was know. going to, you know, the clip I wanted to play. I was going to play uh, for you because I knew you'd be into it. Was him shitting on um, Lady Gaga when she did that uh, Monster Ball uh, tour? Oh, hmm. like uh, like in 2011 or so, like literally five months before he had her on the show. Okay, yeah, because that's why all her Lady Gaga's fans went nuts. And, um, over, um, remember, like when she was coming on the show, they were and like they started and harassing him. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it was because of that that led into it. Well, I, I, absolutely. So, but I th- I realized that no, if I dig deeper, I'm sure I could find all kinds of clips of him from earlier because that's the era. Of, that's right about the time he started getting. He was more getting more serious into star fucking, but. 
I don't think he had, I think he had an idea that there, she'd never be on the show. That's why he kept yeah, doing right. that. Right. right. That's always his MO. If, they, if we can't get them, fuck them. We'll fuck on them. And I don't even know what his problem was with her, really. I never understood why he was trying to wind her up. Well, you know, the, the irony there is in that, in that particular, on that tour, I don't, cause I, I only knew a couple of the songs at that point and I wasn't a big fan. I just liked a couple of the songs, but I wasn't, uh, she got, um, he nailed that, that tour. Like he nailed the pomposity from that. She played Madison square garden and it was an HBO show. Like it was a special. Yeah. And he was, she took clips from, I guess, JD gave him clips from the show and he nailed her pretty accurately, uh, compared to what some of the reviewers say about that tour and the way she was putting it out there that Pina was generally positive, but they're saying like all the criticisms Howard had of the show to me were valid, but it's just ironic that four months later, five months later, they actively campaigned to get her and got her. And you're right. That's exactly why the people on Twitter, we have that audio too. So it's more of a, that one is going to be a rescinding episode. Okay. So as soon as I get all the right clips from the years early, like when she started and stuff, I have to dig really deep yeah. through the show because even it could, it could just be like a, a news story from Robin and all of a sudden he, he just does a little mocking thing for a minute. I, I, one of the funny things that, that Adi, I remember him going off on, on P Diddy. And then he's like, like when he was, you know, when Diddy was changing his name from Puff Daddy to this and that. Yeah. And I just remember Adi said, so what's wrong with you? Grow up. He yeah. just blatantly said, "Grow up," and it just so it just caught me funny, you know. You're like, what, what do you? What's your name this week, Diddy? You know, and he, like he just went off on him. Yep. He's like, grow up. Just sort of, <laughs> yep. Another one, and it isn't even a chick. Oh, uh, you were great with um. Johnny Depp called in, and he made the mistake. He just mentioned in passing he was from Kentucky. Yeah. And then for the rest of the interview, Artie was his, like, white trash Kentucky parent. <laughs> no, but the, the, the one, remember, remember Dixie Cups came in? <laughs> and and I, 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 I was, she was like some sort of porn star, and she mentioned that her son has nine-year-old friends that come over, and she had these huge tits, and her name was, you know, Dixie <laughs> Cups. Uh, I was doing the redneck thing for that, too, like, um... The nine-year-old kids being so horny and and like saying, Miss Cups, I made you a cobbler. <laughs> Dixie Cups. Dixie Cups. That's great. <laughs> and uh, she got very insulted about that's it. That's my new special. I decided that is my new special. Let Benji's have it too. All right, Benji. So Artie. So Mary McCormick settles things with Artie, and then later in the interview, Howard talks about her Tony chances, and uh, here's how that went. Mary McCormick, who is a Tony nominee, that's a very big deal, and she's up against Martha Plimpton. How many Plimpton. Tony nominees I'm up have against, we been in here? I'm up against four Who are other you against? Women. Go ahead, name them all. We'll Sh Sinead Cusack. Never heard of her. Go ahead. Uh, Laurie Metcalf. Never heard of her. Go uh, ahead. Laurie. Laurie was in Nardi's movie. And I oh, starred with her for two years. I'm and the North show, She's yeah. my co-star. Oh, so are you rooting for her or Mary? I'm rooting for, well, it's, it's interesting. I, uh, oh, wow. <laughs> interesting. I, uh, Is Lori here in Fuck Me Thompson? No, no. <laughs> that's it. Did that persuade you at all to change your vote? I'm, rooting for, I'm, I'm a Lori Metcalf guy all the way. I'm rooting for Lori. So. This is the first time I've had an interest in the Tonys. Wow, how great. <laughs> how gay of me. <laughs> right, you somebody just added another one to the list for the Artie show. What? Wasn't there a stripper in here named Crystal Clear? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, you pranked. Oh, yeah. you, went, you remember you went back into the office and you called in black as, her, as her black oh, wife? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> wait, wait, was that the one? From, that was a serious. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that, that was really bad. Yeah. That was like, yo, bitch. <laughs> but did she really think yeah. it was that? Yeah. It was a black wife. <laughs> 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 no, because she wouldn't get top of like she was real excited then. Yeah, I, like, come on, bitch, take the top of it's yeah, okay. Motherfucker, we need the money, man. <laughs> she, I said I gotta, I gotta get some Carson's ribs. <laughs> she bought you. <laughs> I remember specifically, he goes, don't come home without those ribs. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so, so that one like I, kind of thing would never go on now. That's like, that's oh, why you couldn't. Stuff, and this is why, like, when even it's still funny now. And, you listen to the show, and that was the kind of humor it was, and it it was just really blatant, dumb humor, but it's funny. Oh and god! Now they now they avoid it like the plague. They go out of their way to to not do anything like this. 
that crystal clear one, I was of two minds because you could see she was just a, like clearly a demented kid, like, yeah. you know, way too, way too damaged and, you know, just not a shot at being normal. But then <laughs> Artie decided to make, first he said he was going to be her boyfriend at like a, when he called in from uh, Gary's intercom or something like that. Yeah. And then, and then he just, she goes, she goes, Oh no, that's my producer. He goes, no, I'm Rob. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he decided to change it on the fly, which <laughs> she she, he goes, for it. yeah, well, she goes, he goes, he must've been like, so he started, decided that the guy was black, even though she yeah. had never met him. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, I already decided this really awful, like impression of a black guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was so bad. <laughs> Anyway, hook, line, and sink on that. Yeah, one. yeah. All right, I gotta go to my charity thing. Good luck at your charity lunch. <laughs> Anything you want to plug before you go? Uh, we're in the gay section of Baltimore, right? People call me homophobic, but my Baltimore show Saturdays at the Lyric Opera House, Opera House, which is all fruit supposedly, <laughs> and uh, Genesee Theater uh, tomorrow night somewhere outside of Chicago. Yeah, you, just, you just shoot right over to Chicago. Yeah, right? shoot right over. Yeah. My fucking agent, sh you know, fucking by his pool in the valley. <laughs> well, I'm well. Me and Teddy and JD are shooting the Baltimore from Chicago. Fuck him too. <laughs> All right, thanks, Art. Uh, let's go to the phones. We'll talk to Andy in Ontario. Andy, you're on the wrap-up show. Well, Andy, you're on the wrap-up show, but you're not on this show. Sorry to cut you <laughs> off. That's the end of that clip. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, I was glad to have you on for this particular uh, one because I like to mix it up, and it doesn't always have to be about serious crap, not serious XM, serious I-O-U-S. Um, yeah. And, uh, and, and we like to mix it up and make sure there's some frivolity in the shows. And so you guys get a good fucking laugh out of it. Cause the other thing is, and, and I, I, even myself, I'm discovering things about the show as I go through it. It's like, um, when you think, you know, an artist, like, a, a like, a Miles Davis who had like so many different eras and you go and you delve deep and he like changed music five times. So every time you discover an era, it's like, um, a whole new door is opened. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's like the early Audi era, there's the the off you know, off the wall era, and then there was like the crash and burn era for, for Audi. But mm -hmm. um just remind you of like why we, we were all super fans because of things like this that it's still funny to now. You know, oh yeah. You never hear anything like that out there now. Yeah, and and, and in fact, and in fact, I don't know if it's like we aged out, like the, the comedy aged out of us or what have you. I think there's going to be, unfortunately, uh almost like a, a crucifixion. There's going to be a comedian and I'm not talking like Louis CK and that scandal about him jerking off mm. in front of other comics. And I mean, the problem with the Louis CK thing at the time I remember was, well, it's not that he's not, it, it, he's asking like, he's not, he's not, as far as I know, he wasn't telling people you got to do this otherwise, but he was in a position of power and he was able to do it with lower strength comics like people with less power and what are they going to say he could blackball them there's a there's a threat implicit threat unless you're at the same level and if they did it with consent then it's not a problem but it's still a freaky thing once you know it's out there and he i don't think he's been able to recover no that's um that well that that i don't know what that other thing maybe he was going to put out that other thing by himself that yeah, he did it was and just about to get uh, launched you know and then yeah. that um that all happened and um but the the other one I heard too I just read it last night that another one that was um kind of caught doing that kind of stuff was the guy that played Captain Jack on um, Doctor Who I guess things are coming out about him oh which really kind of funny because yeah because I I actually met him in an elevator um, with my girlfriend at um, one of the the sci fi shows or whatever and um, <laughs> did he nice jerk off <laughs> no no he was um, well I guess he walks around with his dick out and on the set and stuff like that but, lovely. Um, yeah, he did it for um, the girl that played Martha, and she kind of just like blew it off. But yeah, if you go on Wikipedia, I just I saw all the stuff tonight that he's kind of canceled and um, uh, uh, somehow, you know. But you know, I guess he's gay, so he might they might let him slide. I don't know. But well, um, the one that's really fucked up that I'm surprised they ne like I, I'm really surprised that they never just canned his ass and 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 spread his name out like the you know already as bad bad as it already is even worse in blackball and was that Ezra Miller who played the flash yeah um, right. like if you read the the stories about that deviant fuck uh that guy yeah. and had nothing to do with being gay I don't in fact I don't even know if he's gay is he gay I don't know 
Yeah. yeah, it doesn't matter. It, it's not about gay. Yeah. It's like his violent tendencies and this torture, like bondage and, and, and all kinds of fucking emotional abuse this guy's done. It's a, it's, if I read through it, you guys would be, you'd lose your lunch. It's really disgusting. And they allowed him to go forward as yeah. having a, a movie, like, and being part of the, uh, the, the DC shit. And, and I just don't know how that, how that washes. Did they already drop like a, a ton of money into that to, to the point where they couldn't go back or what was, I suppose, you know? or, or I guess they thought, well, it'd be worth it because he was so good in the flash, like the TV show yeah. that all oh, the, the built in fan base wouldn't pay attention. But you know, it's like sports scans, it's like Joe Paterno. Are you really going to, right. you know, double down on it, hoping yeah. for, you know, willful blindness on people? Because the, the truth is, and I'll, I'll give this the example I always use is Kevin Spacey. Okay, we yeah, know about Kevin right. Spacey, and he's the, like he is a phenomenal actor and was a phenomenal actor. And there's so many good films he was in. The Negotiator, I, I still find it entertaining. Uh, the Usual Suspects uh, was a good film, obviously, but he was good in um, God L.A. Confidential. That's a great film. But at some sometimes it's it it depends on the artist it depends on the person you, sometimes you can separate yourself from it and decide well from this point forward i'm not watching anything yeah. like with him in it cuz i didn't know this back then and it, it wasn't wasn't public and mm. i was ha- happily happily like um not cognizant of that this this going on sometimes you can separate it and sometimes you can't and it's up to each individual to decide this is what i'm going to boycott but the kevin the uh, brian singer the director that worked with kevin spacey yeah. on so many films the x-men stuff him i i'm i'm, I'm never i boycott it there's just no way yeah. well the other thing that that marvel got stuck with is the whole incident with um the guy that was going to be playing kang and uh, now that's out of the picture which is too bad because that was the only redeeming quality of that Ant Man and Wasp, and um, that I was kind of looking forward to. But um, I don't know. The whole Marvel thing's going to be crash. That's a crash and burn too. But yeah. um, but yeah, as far as the cancellation stuff, it was good to have um, like the like I don't know, maybe do a show later for best of Artie kind of things, like the things that we loved about Artie, and um, have a positive show. Well, they <laughs> There's so people much out there. People do appreciate it. We did recently the emotional friend thing, and uh, right. I know people really did enjoy that, even though it might not seem like it on YouTube. But uh, but that's because people are listening in different uh, apps more than they're not watching YouTube to get their shows that they want anymore. And also, since we do Patreon, a lot of people that used to just double up and listen to YouTube or whatever the uh, regular apps, they used uh, um, Patreon, and we don't get um, – we don't really get algorithms for that. Like yeah. we don't get how many, if you replay it three times on Patreon, we're not going to know. We don't get those numbers. Yeah. I had, I listened to it off of Podbean and yeah. just this week, the, the emotional friend ones. And I forgot how funny those were. And, um, but yeah, that's the thing. And, um, but the other extra episodes are on Patreon. So, um, I got those but, ones coming to me too. Yeah. When you, and you hook the RSS feed into whatever your media player is. And once right. they download, they go straight to it. I didn't understand that for the longest time. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Um, yep. I just listened to it streaming because I can use the work Wi-Fi to stream it. And plus yep. I have my data, my data plan. Cause at, right now I listen in the car. I listen, you know, to my drive uh, to and back and forth to work. And then um, as I work, I listen to the show and, um, I listened to like within what, like when did I start back in July, I almost got caught up with all the years of QF. I think I got like eight, eight episodes left on, um, pod beam and then the rest on, on, um, on the, um, um, Patreon. Patreon. Yep. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's well, good. Well, we're glad to have you aboard for uh, helping out because this, and it's especially invaluable. Uh, the last lens uh, not feeling well. He's got a cough that won't go away. He's congested oh. a little bit and uh, maybe even some sneezing. Bob is not feeling really good at all. So, guys, uh, shout out to him. <clears throat> I hope, I wish he hope he feels better because he's also not getting a lot of sleep, and that's that's detrimental. You you know you don't get sleep, the immune system goes to shit, <clears throat> and you can't fight off anything. So, but I think today's Raven's birthday, right? Uh, the seventh, I believe, was Raven's birthday, oh, and okay. Kayla's as well. They both had they share a yeah. birthday. Yeah, I saw that. And Sam's probably uh, watching the Bills right now, which I'm going to do after the show. Yeah, uh, hopefully absolutely. they beat, beat Miami because uh, yep. Patriots are out. They tanked today, whatever. So that's what I'm going to do after the show now. 
Yeah, I was at last night. I was uh, I I took I slept instead of watching the game. Uh, Liverpool uh, beat Arsenal two nothing in the FA Cup uh, round, a, a four third round or fourth round, third round I think. And then Ajax beat Olympiacos two to one at Olympiacos Stadium, which is always fucking good news for me. But I could again that was like five a.m. I couldn't stay up to watch that. That was brutal. I'll just watch the highlights like the rest of the the people that can can actually, you know, that actually have to. You know, lives to, to to arrange. You can't just watch sports whenever you want, unfortunately. Um, but anyway, thank you so much, brother, for hanging in there. And we'll record again while I'm on vacation. And um, just uh, stay loose, stay stay healthy, and uh, we'll uh, talk to you again. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks for having me back. And no, at any time you're always welcome. And anytime you got a subject that you got in mind for certain, like you definitely okay. want dibs on it, you tell me so you get dibs on it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Take care, guys. We love you. Thanks a lot, everybody. I don't say pasta shoot. I say pasta chop. That's what I say. He's a phony Italian, Paul. Who's a phony Italian? Yeah. Why are you Napolitano? I'm Napolitano. And sure. You don't understand the Sicilian. I'm so vile. Oh, no. I'm not going to laugh. And it's not a man of manjata. Say, what's a manjata? No, it's not a man of manjata. Estupado de Santa Catarina. Estupado de Santa Catarina.